let's kick this thing off, shall we? Week 2 of the 2024 FRC season did not disappoint. There were some very interesting robots, very interesting strategies, and some points that I need to uh, address real quick. See, uh, I read off my notes. This is actually, if you want to... If you want to get spoilers, these are my notes. The Rookie All-Star Award is no longer an automatic world slot for teams who win it at regionals. Uh, so my week one recap video is slightly wrong in the team list. All of the Rookie All-Star Awards should not be up there because they have not moved on to worlds yet. At the district level, it does look like Teams who win it move on to the district championship, and then teams who win it at the district championship will then move on to Worlds. Point number two. Last week during the Wainimi Port Regional, I accidentally called Pally Robotics team number four. Pally Robotics is team number eight. Team number four is team element. God help me. I confuse two teams with only a single digit in their team number. Next year, I'm gonna be talking about teams with five. Someone suggested I should talk about some of the Mid-Atlantic districts, and I'm gonna look at uh, the Allentown district because 1923 is now the best robot in the Mid-Atlantic district, uh, thanks in part to these assists that they're Alliance partner was sending over uh, and they were just able to absolutely churn out cycles uh, in their win. This strategy has quickly become my favorite with alliances absolutely churning out cycle times. It was best two out of three and they played three matches but they didn't lose a single one because finals match one was a tie which you just gotta love to see it. You also gotta love to see a robot that's just a box because that can be our segue into defensive strategies. Because I've seen two effective ways of playing defense. You have wall and box. You had the three ring circuits and their kiddie pool with shoot here written on it. You got the Tuscan Raiders and their womp womp bot. And you have bad robotics and their smiley bot are all walls. You line up near the goal and you just try to get in the way of teams trying to score, trying to block their shots, trying to bump them. And really just being in the way helps with that, just taking the middle spot because that's where a lot of them like taking their shots from. So that's strategy number one. Strategy number two is just be a box, and that's what 2577 was at the Allentown District. They were just a box, and we saw this at a few other places this weekend as well. You just post up in the middle so you block a clear path to the loading zone, making teams need to squiggle back through the other side's stage area, and it just slows them down. Week two was also a great week for Quackabots. If you don't know why I call them Quackabots, it's because back during my midway recap, I talked about a robot in three days team called the Unqualified Quackas, whose robot design I think was gonna go far. And lo and behold, some of the winners this weekend had bots that looked very similar to this one's design. 3276, the Tool Cats won the Great Northern Regional. 8711, the Midnight Ostrich Runners, whose name I still love, won the Green Country Regional, and 353 and 354 won the Hudson Valley Regional together, and they both had Quackabots as well. We also got updates and clarifications to some rulings after the weekend. One of them being probably the most important one, the G211 ruling, stating that you cannot force an opponent to commit a penalty. This was seen a lot at the Bosphorus Regional, where teams would try to push their opponents into their own stage area in hopes of uh, picking up some penalty points, which actually was effective, unfortunately. We did see this at San Francisco, with 64-18 dying in the red stage area, 
and Alliance partner 9114 pushing them out of the way before 971 uh, came into the scene to push them back into the red staging area, which everyone looked on in disbelief. The MCs didn't believe what they were seeing. The head FTA didn't believe what they were seeing. The head ref was like, what am I supposed to do here? So once Endgame happens and 971 pushes 6418 back into the stage area the head ref is correct in putting the penalty points onto 971 and not 6418 you gotta remember what sport you're playing gotta keep it gp people let's get into my big three for the week offensive bot of the week was so tough it was so tough i wanted to give it to the Istanbul Wildcats, 94-83, who it turns out uh, was 72-85 Besiktas, also known as the Sneaky Snakes. And that checks out because Besiktas won four regionals in their five years of existing. Don't know uh, exactly why they dissolved as a team, but it looked like uh, uh, the Istanbul Wildcats were picking up right where they left off. I also thought about giving it to High Tide or the Rembrandts for their performances at the Ventura County Regional, including a world record, which, as I'm recording this, is still holding. But I gotta give Offensive Bot of the Week to Bread. They have been one of the most effective amp scorers and speaker scorers. One of the highest scoring robots in the world, and I don't think that will change anytime soon. They went a combined 13 of 14 in the finals at San Francisco, including 6 for 6 at the speaker in the first finals match. They are so quick with it and their leave a penny take a penny strategy has been really effective in amplifying those speakers defensive bot of the week was also tough but i gotta give it to the pool bot yeah they lost but they still held the other side to 11 of 34 in those two finals matches which is insane if the offensive bots that we've seen holding your opponent to 33% is insane, especially, especially for the fact that they did it with a kiddie pool mounted onto their robot and against a team that can shoot over the kiddie pool. Absolutely loved it. And now for my top moment from week two, we have the Tractor Technicians, Team 3655, who I talked about previously on this channel because they won the Milstein Division last year at Worlds. They competed at the Escanaba Regional, and during one of their matches, their autonomous didn't get the angle quite right, so it skied one into the audience and dunked it onto an unsuspecting onlooker which come on that that should win you the event right there what are the chances that someone just happens to not pay attention at the correct moment to have this happen this this is one in a million what can i say i am a sucker for a good trick shot so thank you for watching i hope you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my Week 3 recap, we got a whole lot of teams competing. We got Citrus and the Cheesy Poofs down at the Sacramento Regional. And we have Jack in the Bot and Bare Metal at the Bonnie Lake event. So let me know what else I should be talking about during the bits for Week 3. As always, gracious in victory, professional in defeat. Amen. Red, that's your number one, 143, high score. We'll have to look up the current world record, see where we're at. That's a nice one for week two.